Welcome to Canon Conversation number 439. We are on the last question from our book, Letters from a Skeptic. And the last question, question number 29 on here, or in here, is how can I be sure it's all true? I think that's a great question because anybody can tell you a story. You, there are a lot of stories out there. The Mormons have their stories, the Catholics have their stories, the Baptists have their stories, and then you got all the, you know, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Islam, Judaism. You got a lot of stories out there. And all those stories are lies. So, how do I know that the Bible is true? And how do I know that the interpretations that I come up with in the Bible are true as opposed to someone else's interpretations? And really the answer, it all starts with the Gospel. That's why in 1 Corinthians 3.3, 3, Paul says about the Corinthians, he says, "Ye are yet carnal. He basically couldn't even tell if they were saved or not based upon their actions alone. And so he says, I, he says in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, he says, I determine not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He says, I didn't know if you're saved or not based on your actions. So I have to find out if you've believed the gospel. And the reason he needed to find that out is because before you are saved, you are dead in your trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2, 1. Once you are saved, Romans 5, 5 says, the Holy Ghost is given unto us. 1 Corinthians 2 goes on to tell us that the, uh, one of the things the Holy Ghost does is he teaches us the deep things of God. Around verse 8 or 9 it says, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth the deep things of God. You notice it says, I had not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for those that love him. If you are an unbeliever, if you have never recognized your sin and you've never believed the gospel, you are dead in your trespasses and sins. And so if you read scripture, you will not learn anything about the things of God. There are really two realms. There is the material realm, the world that we operate in here, according to the flesh and then there is the spirit realm God is a spirit John 4 24 says and he that worships him must worship him in spirit and in truth the things that you find in the Bible the, the answers to the questions that we have covered from that book there are all spiritual answers if you are an unbeliever your spirit is dead in your trespasses and sins. Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. If you are dead in your trespasses and sins, you have no capacity whatsoever to understand the things of God. Therefore, I don't know anything about the person, the people in this book. I never even read the book. I just read the questions. If it says the it says this is a book about a son wrestling with his father's questions about Christianity. If the son is saved and the father is not saved, and when the son gives the gospel to the father and the father still doesn't believe, then the father learned absolutely nothing about the spiritual things of God. It's a different realm that he's not alive to. When you, God gives you a conscience, the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. God gives you the conscience. 
The conscience works with the sin nature so that you become exceeding sinful. The idea there is so that you will recognize that you're a sinner. If you take an objective look at yourself, you can recognize you are a sinner. And then, when you do that, you begin to look for the solution, which today is trusting in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you recognize your sin, you are still dead in your trespasses and sins, but you recognize your sinful condition. And so then the Holy Ghost will come, and he will guide you to the solution of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He will reward you for diligently seeking God. And then you'll find that solution, you'll believe, you'll find the gospel, you'll believe it. And then you are made alive in Christ. The Holy Spirit is given unto you, the mind of Christ is given unto you. So then when you read scripture, you can now begin to understand the deep things of God. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 that he wanted to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He wanted to make sure that they were believers before he started answering their questions. Because if he starts going into judging angels, Lord's Supper, spiritual gifts, resurrection, you know, all the topics that he mentions there in 1 Corinthians, and they are unbelievers, they won't, it won't do them any good. Even if they do the things he suggests, they follow the Lord's Supper instructions correctly, or they kick out the one who is sleeping with his father's wife. They, if they, even if they follow those instructions, spiritually speaking, it still won't do them any good because they're still dead in their trespasses and sins. And maybe they follow those instructions and it helps practically speaking in the material world, but it does nothing in the spiritual realm. Just like I've said over and over again, someone may be a drunk or a drug addict and they go to a church and go through a 12-step program and get over that addiction. And that's great that they got over that addiction. It'll help them in this life that they, they're not bound to that sin that they were committed. But spiritually speaking, it does them absolutely no good if they've never recognized they're a sinner and trusted in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for their sin. So when it comes to the things of God and asking these spiritual questions, you must recognize you're a sinner and believe the gospel. And then you become spiritually alive in Christ. And so then you can understand the deep things of God. So when the question is asked, how do I know this is all true? Well, practically speaking, the material standpoint, uh, you can look at historical facts and see that it's true. Prophecies, uh, you know, if you wanted to do a secular study, let's say you're not a safe person and you wanted to try to find out if it's all true. I heard uh, Lee Strobel, he says that he was an atheist and he searched out, and a lawyer too, I think, and he, so he searched out the Bible and researched it doing his due diligence like a lawyer would, approaching it from that lawyer standpoint. And so then he took an objective look at those events, the prophecies, and he looked to see and he found out that there are no contradictions in the Bible, that the prophecies, every prophecy that was in the past has all been fulfilled 100% correct, no deviation from that. Looking at the Messiah, looking at all the things Jesus did to fulfill Old Testament prophecies, only God could have done those things. There are certain things you could do as a man, but a lot of it, there's no way. For example, it says that he's going to be born of a virgin. Well, no way of fixing that. He says that uh, when he was young, as a child, that he would be moved to Egypt. 
that Nazareth, that he would be, Nazareth would be his hometown. Uh, you know, those things he can't control. When you're a kid, you can't say, oh, I'm going to make Nazareth my hometown. Or I'm going to flee to Egypt when I'm two years old. You, you can't do that stuff. So you can look at some of those things and well, from the cross. Prophecy says they're not going to break any of his bones. And that's what happened. Instead of breaking his bones like they normally would, a so, uh, uh, soldier pierced his side with a sword. Didn't break any of his bones. And when you're nailed to a cross, you have no control over that. They cast lots for his garment. No control over that. So you can look at all those prophecies from a lawyer natural standpoint, like Lee Strobel did. He wrote the, the Case for Christ and several other books like that. And you could see that those things are true. So if you're looking at it from a natural standpoint, you can look at archaeological finds or you can look at prophecies about the Messiah and see if he really fulfilled them. Try to find things in the Old Testament that are prophecies and then see if they were fulfilled completely and they, and they were. So you can do that from a natural standpoint. But my point is, the important stuff is not that. I mean, yeah, that's important to have evidence that Jesus fulfilled the, all the prophecies related to the Messiah. But what you're looking for is a spiritual rebirth. You're looking, the problem that you have is that you're dead in your trespasses and sins. When you're investigating all this stuff that's in this book, and he asks these questions that the skeptic asks, Really what you need to do is, instead of asking your questions about that, you need to address your sin problem. You need to recognize that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. You need to recognize there's nothing you can do to be a good person. There is none good, no, not one. There is none righteous, no, not one. You need to approach the scripture when it comes to seeing if it's true or not. You have to start with the basis of the spiritual realm. Uh, like I say, you can look at the material realm and you can investigate some of those prophecies. But really, <coughs> that doesn't do you a whole lot of good. If, if you come to scripture, if you recognize that you are a sinner, just like in Luke 18 with the story of the Pharisee and the publican. The, the Pharisee, the publican, come, the, well, the Pharisee comes and says, I thank God that I'm not like other men are. In other words, he says, I'm not a sinner. I'm a good person. He says, I fast, fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I thank God that I'm not like this publican. It says that the Pharisee was not justified by God. He came to God with the approach that he was righteous in his own good deeds, his own works. The publican came to God and beat himself on his chest and would not even look up to God for the shame that he felt over his sin. And he said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And that story in Luke 18 says that the publican went away justified, but the Pharisee still had sin on his life. When you come to God, it shouldn't be saying, well, there's a contradiction between the number 400 in 2 Kings, but in 1 Chronicles, it's, it seems like it's 4,000. So that's a contradiction, so the Bible isn't true. Or let's explain that. Or... You know, the Romans 3.28 says you're justified by faith alone, but James 2.24 says you're justified by faith plus works. There's a contradiction. Forget about being negative toward God and His Word or trying to disprove the Bible. You need to come to the Bible not to try to disprove it or to prove it, really. You come to the Bible because you've recognized that you are a sinner. Before you even open up the Bible, before you even consider that, you need to take a look at yourself. 
Stop trying to put the blame on God and look at yourself. People will do that if they, you know, someone does something wrong, then they bring up and point the finger at somebody else claiming that the other person did that wrong. And so then it gets the focus on the other person and then the other person is trying to defend himself and prove that he's innocent. And what that does is it takes the heat off of the person who did the sin. That's human nature. That's the sin nature operating there. And that's what people do when they come to the Bible. There are millions of people out there that say the Bible is made by man. There are contradictions. There are errors. It's not God's word. It's not true. It's just a bunch of fairy tales and myths. Instead of trying to look at the Bible and finding fault with it or trying to prove if it's true or not true, what we need to do instead is look at ourselves because we don't have the capacity to understand the deep things of God. So you can't tell that God is love or you can't tell what true joy or true peace is without being a saved person because you are dead in your trespasses and sins. The fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit of God is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, all those things listed there. And if you are dead in your trespasses and sins, the Holy Spirit cannot communicate to your spirit because your spirit is dead. Therefore, you cannot understand true love, joy, peace. You don't have any capacity within you to understand the deep spiritual things of God. And so there is no need to search the scriptures to see if it is true. The first thing you must do, the thing you do have the capacity to do, is God has lightened you, given you light, by giving you the conscience. You have a sin nature. Everything you do is a sin before you are saved. So all you do is sin. And then God has given you God has given you a conscience so that you can recognize that everything you do is a sin. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And by giving you a conscience, you can examine yourself and see that that statement, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, is true. You can see that you are a sinner. And so then once you recognize you're a sinner, then you start looking for the solution. Again, we're not looking to see if the Bible is true. We're not blaming God. We're not doing any of that stuff. You got to do what the publican did. The publican said, have mercy upon me, God, a sinner. He didn't say, well, I'm going to search to see what the, you know, if there are 400 chariots in this passage or 4,000 chariots. And since there seemed to be a contradiction, then the Bible is untrue and I'm going to throw it out. He didn't say that. He wasn't looking to find fault with God and His Word to justify himself. He wasn't the guy who did a bad thing who pointed his finger at somebody else. So now we're going to look at them. Politicians are like that all the time. We got a presidential election coming up later this year. And there are all these commercials. And they blame people. Like Mike Bloomberg is blaming Trump for a million more people uninsured with no health insurance. Well, if you point your finger at Trump, then you're not going to see, well, it's really the Democrats' fault that that's the case. Because now you're too busy trying to show that uh, Trump, you know, trying to defend Trump rather than looking at who caused the problem. And that's what sinners do. Rather than recognizing their own sin, they point their finger at God and say, that church is wrong and they represent God, therefore I'm not going to listen to them. Or the Bible is wrong. It's full of errors. I'm not going to listen to that. There is no God. I am my own God. I am righteous in my own. It's all about pointing, putting the blame on God and His Word or religious institutions and not focusing on the fact that the person looking objectively at your own self and seeing that you are a sinner. So once, and that's what skeptics do. So if, but if you look if you forget about trying to prove God is wrong, so you can just blame your, point your finger at God and justify your own self, 
Instead, what you need to do is examine your own self. That's really the only thing you have the capacity to do. If you're an unbeliever, you cannot examine the scriptures to see if what the scripture says is true. Because your spirit is dead in trespasses and sins. And God is a spirit. And God's word is true and it's spiritual truths. Now the spiritual truths apply in the material world, but it's still all spiritual things. And so you have to come to the scripture. First you've got to recognize you're a sinner. And then you look for the solution. When you do that, then the Holy Spirit will give you the capacity to recognize that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection atones for your sin. And I've said before, there are plenty of people, most everybody believes there is a man named Jesus who died on a cross. Most everybody will believe that, regardless of what religion you're from or anything. They'll at least admit to that. Because not only does the Bible play, show that to be true, but history shows it to be true also. But if it stops right there, if you just say, a man named Jesus died on a cross, or even if you go as far as say he rose from the dead, but you just believe all of that as a historical fact, you are still dead in your trespasses and sins. You first must recognize you're a sinner and look for the solution. And then, when you recognize Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you don't recognize it as a historical fact, but you recognize it as the solution, as the atonement for your sins. And when you trust in that, then God gives you eternal life. So the, so the Holy Spirit, once you recognize you're a sinner, gives you the spiritual insight to see that the solution is to believe the gospel. And once you believe that solution, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. You're forgiven all your trespasses. You're given the mind of Christ. And you have now the ability to say, with all these questions, how do I know it, this is all true. The answer to that is you know that all these things that we've talked about, the answers to these questions in this book, you know that it's all true because the Holy Spirit has taught you the truth comparing spiritual things with spiritual as you have examined God's Word and believed it. Only then will you know if it's true or not. If you are a skeptic who doesn't believe the gospel, doesn't recognize you're a sinner, and you come to try to prove if all these things that we've talked about are true or not from the Bible, you won't know any of them is true or false because we're talking about spiritual things and your spirit is dead in trespasses and sins. So you can't examine God. You cannot, in other words, you cannot be the judge of God and determine that God is true or God is a liar and then based upon that decide to believe the gospel or not. It doesn't work that way. You cannot be the judge of God. God is the judge. What you have to do is judge yourself. God has given you, the only thing he's given you light on as an unbeliever in the spiritual things is to judge yourself. And so you judge whether you are a perfect holy person who will have eternal life based upon your own merits. And you have the capacity to recognize that. Romans 1.32 says, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but take pleasure in them that do them. Everybody knows that the sin they do makes them worthy of death because God has shown that to them. And so when you stop pointing your finger at God and trying to find fault with God, and you look at yourself instead, then you can come to the truth that you are a sinner and that you need God to save you. You are a sinner and God is God and you are not God. When you come to that realization, then you can look for the solution. Believe the gospel. And then once you believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit will come and he'll teach you the deep things of God. So then when you ask the questions that are in this book, 
you can understand those answers and you know that they're true because they are spiritual things so they are only understood on a spiritual level and you must be saved in order to understand them but if you're just trying to disprove God and you want to be his judge and prove he's a liar then you've done it before you've really examined the evidence and you're still dead in your trespasses and sins. Thanks for watching.